So things haven't turned out as you hoped. Life took a turn. A bump. A darkened sky. And at times it may have seemed there was no hope. But here's the good news. Our God is the God of fresh starts. Our God is the God of new beginnings. Our God brings new mercies, new compassions, not just once a year, not just when things are bad, but every single morning. This season has been tough. And for many of us, things will never be the same. But we are here, breathing, maybe smiling, or crying, or shouting, or laughing. But we are here, feeling, maybe fighting, or cheering, or seeking, or grieving, but we are here living and we are not alone our God is here our God is with us and our God is the God of new creations Well, who needs a fresh start tonight? Who needs a new beginning? I've got some great news for you. You can have that fresh start. You can have that new beginning. All you need to do is ask God. He is the God of fresh starts and new beginnings. Amen? Amen. Welcome. I am Pastor Layton, the Celebrate Recovery Pastor here at Calvary Christian Church in Linfield, Massachusetts. And I am so excited that you are here with us this evening. If you're new here, a special Welcome to you. Great that you're here with us. Please enjoy the fellowship, the worship, and the message. And I'm so excited again this Monday night to have the Friends of Jesus back here worshiping with us. And it's just been such a blessing, their worship. And let's move right into time of worship right now. Wow. 
It is so, so well with my soul. It is so, so well. I don't think you want to hear me break off in a song, although some people say that I've got a pretty good voice, but I'm not going to bless you with my worship right now. But really appreciate the friends of Jesus and their worship. This is the part of the evening where we like to do an offering for Celebrate Recovery. Celebrate Recovery is a self-sustaining ministry, so anything you offer to Celebrate Recovery is just used for this ministry so we can grow and help people that are dealing with hurts, hang-ups, and habits. There's four ways you can give. If you can click on if you click on the Ways to Give button in the chat room now, that'll take you to a page on the Calvary website. And you can give online, or you can give via texting, or you can mail an uh, offering uh, through the mail, or you can actually drop off an offering here at the church. There is a slot next to the main office door, which is secure, and you can put an offering in there. Let me uh, pray over the offering. Dear Lord, thank you for everybody that's joined us tonight, whether they're on their iPad or their phones or their computer. Just really appreciate them being here tonight. I ask for a blessing over this offering so we can reach more people with hurts and hangups and habits and help them walk that journey. I boldly ask that you, do, uh, this, you double this offering so we can even reach more people. And just thank you again for everybody that's here this evening. Thank you, Jesus for sending the Holy Spirit to help us guide us uh, through this evening as we meet in fellowship and we walk down this journey together of recovery. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. Let's hear from the friends of Jesus one more time.
Let's shout to the Lord. Let's really, really shout to the Lord tonight. Thank you so much, uh, Alex, Vinny, Ingrid, Ronnie, Kathleen, and Rachel for your worship. Just really, really appreciate your talent and your gifts and your heart for worship. Thanks so much. Welcome again. I am Pastor Layton, the Celebrate Recovery Pastor here at Calvary Christian Church in Linfield, Massachusetts. So excited that you've joined us here tonight. And if you've been coming here since we've been online, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you're new here, welcome. Feel free to type new in the chat room so we know you're new here if you want and we can say hello to you. But just so grateful that you're here this evening. If you are new, we have open share groups after this meeting, which is usually around 730. But you can't join an open share group until you've joined the newcomers group, uh, which is newcomers 101. And we meet via Zoom right around 7.30, the same time the other open share groups meet. But you must go to the newcomers group uh, first, so you've, the following week you can attend an open share group. Uh, myself, Mary, and Jason, we host that group, uh, like I said, on Zoom, and we'll get you up to speed on Celebrate Recovery, how it all works, and how the open share uh, groups works. Feel free to hit that new here button and let me know who you are. And there's also a link in the chat room, and it'll be in the chat room later. Uh, the newcomers uh, 101 and you can click on that and go right to the zoom meeting after this meeting but don't click on it now uh, we have another great message from dr maria perez and her message is entitled how to be exceedingly wise success success basics 101 that's a mouthful to be exceedingly wise success basics 101 and Maria's got a great message for us tonight, Dr. Maria. And some of you asked what type of doctor she is, and she's a doctor of educational leadership. I'm not sure what that entails, a doctor of educational leadership, but I probably has something to do, do with schools. Uh, but I do know she's a smart, smart, very, very wise woman who loves the Lord. Let's hear what Dr. Perez has to say this evening. Welcome to Celebrate Recovery. It's so good to have you back today. I'm glad you joined us. To, so today I'd like to talk to you about a portion of scripture. And I want to emphasize once again how important scripture is. It is truly our lifeline. It is our prescription for life. It is our blueprint. And I'd like to remind you to go back and listen to Faraday's message that she gave a couple of weeks ago where she talked about the Exodus story. And I really would like to encourage you to go back and read it because the Word of God speaks to us. God wants to encourage you through His Word. And my hope is that you have a daily reading schedule. So today's scripture is based on Proverbs 30, 24 through 28. So let me read it for you. There are four things which are little on the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their food in the summer. The rock badgers are a feeble folk, yet they make their homes in the crags. The locusts have no king, yet they all advance in ranks. The spider skillfully grasps with its hands, and it is in king's palaces. So today we're going to examine what God can teach us through these small creatures. And I've entitled my message, How to Be Exceedingly Wise, Success Basics 101. So today we're going to look at the art of preparation, living among rocks and cliffs, embracing change and uncertainty, leading by example, doing the right thing at the right time, and cultivating a, our unique skills and abilities. So let's look at the art of preparation. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their food in the summer. Another, ants model this attitude by the way they live their lives. Another scripture about the ant is in Proverbs 6, 6 through 8. Listen to what it says. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no captain, overseer or ruler provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. So what does preparation include? Let's read the definition. It includes to stand firm, to be established, to be steadfast, to be faithful, to be reliable, to be ready, to set up, to make oneself ready, 
The main idea is to bring something into certain existence so that when you're preparing, you're bringing something into certain existence. So by being ready, by being prepared, you are establishing yourself for whatever God has for your future, whatever God has for your future. See, it doesn't matter whether you see yourself as strong or big, powerful or weak, because ants are neither big or powerful. These are small creatures. It's not about size, stature, power, or prestige, what degrees you have, or what your family line is. These are applicable for everyone. So let's see what John Maxwell says about preparation. He says that preparation positions people correctly and it is often the separation between winning and losing. People who prepare well live by this motto. Listen to the motto, all's well that begins well. So let's listen to Henry Ford, what he says, before everything else, getting ready is the secret to success. Before everything else, getting ready is the secret to success. So what are you doing with this season in your life? Where and what has God placed in your hands right now? Make the most of every opportunity. Think of every opportunity as a gift coming from God. Remember, commitment and follow through will take you further than any talent or particular advantage. Commitment and follow through. How much time you allocate to your preparation is an indicator or a predictor of the quality of your future performance. How much time are you spending in preparation for what God has for you in your future? Preparation sometimes can, requires us to stick at something it may require a continuous effort. What is God preparing you to do? What is God preparing you to do? Everything in your life is a prelude to your future. Everything. So I remember the first time God showed me this process of preparation. It was many years ago when I first attended this church. It was in the summer and the entire summer Pastor Tim was preaching about evangelism explosion and the Holy Spirit said you need to take this class. So that September I signed up and there were actually 10 groups that were going out to give the gospel message. But if you've taken um, <clears throat> EE at any point in, in your history, you know how tedious it is. It's a lot of work. And in the end of the 13 weeks, you have 13 index cards, 13 index cards that you have to memorize, that you have to know, that you will be tested on. So I didn't know it at the time. I didn't know it at the time that September, God was preparing me to go back to school. Because that September, from September to December, I'm memorizing 13 index cards. And that January, I was once again enroll enrolled in school after 20 years. God used the EE class to prepare me to go back to school. Sometimes getting ready or being prepared requires you to take one small step at a time, like the ant takes one small grain at a time. So here's our first reflection. I want you to ask yourself, what is God preparing you to do or be? He is always thinking about your future. And what small steps can you take today to begin now in preparation for you? God's always thinking about your future. What can you do to prepare for it? What can you do to prepare, prepare for it? So our next little creature, let's read about him. Living among rocks and cliffs, embracing change and uncertainty. The rock badgers are a feeble folk, yet they make their crags their home in the crags. They make their home in the crags. Now, if you've done any rock climbing, you know how uncertain the rock climbing is. The terrain is uncertain. And when you're rock climbing, you can't predict what's ahead of you. You just have to look at what's in front of you. You can't focus everywhere and anywhere. You have to look at where your feet are at any given moment. Now, cliff badgers are delicate little animals who protect themselves while living among, this, among, among the rocks, among uncertain terrain. So what does it entail to live among the rocks? Being successful cliff dwellers encompasses, listen to what it does entail, five things, taking risks, Facing your fears, accepting change, embracing uncertainty, 
and increasing your perception, increasing your perception. The greatest mistake a man or woman can make is to be afraid of making one, to be afraid of making one. Let's look at taking risks. J.K. Rowling, let's see what she says. You might never feel on the scale I did, but some failure in life is inevitable. It is impossible to live without failing at something unless you live so cautiously that you might as well have not lived at all, in which case you fail by default. You might never fail at the scale I did, but some failure in life is inevitably you have to take risks. What do you need to risk today? Maybe it may be failure. It may be taking a new direction. Maybe you are saying to yourself, I've never done that before. I've never done that before. Now I want to talk a little bit more about going back to school for me because you see, when I went back to school that January, it was taking a risk. I'll tell you why. Because when I came out of high school, I took a year off and then at the age of 19, I went back and I took two classes. Took two classes at a university, biology and English. And I'll never forget my English teacher that first time out of high school. She uh, actually was very difficult, very challenging. And I remember one incident where she actually called on a student to stand up. And so she said to the student, you, you think you're a writer? She said, I know your parents are famous authors, but you, you can't write. And she basically tore her work apart. Well, soon after, she called me into her office. <laughs> she called me into her office and she began to say to me, I don't know how you got here. She said, I don't know what you learned in high school, but you cannot write. Needless to say, soon after, I quit school. So when God was calling me back to go back in January, it was truly taking a risk. It was like I was going off the cliff, but God said, now is the time. I want you to think about right now, think about something you've always wanted to do or risk doing, but were afraid to fail and venture outside your comfort zone. What has God calling you to take a risk doing? Because you're afraid of failure. This may be the time to take that risk. So now let's look at facing our fears. God's desire is for you to overcome our fears. He wants us to overcome our fears. According to one author, God wants us to go where we've never gone and do what we've never done. To go where we've never, to go where we've never gone and to do what we've never done. Facing our fears. How do we do that? Sometimes God allows us to be exposed to small quantities of whatever we are afraid of to help us build an immunity to it. Sometimes God allows us to, have, to be exposed to small quantities. So I want to ask you, what fears is God trying to have you overcome and face? so that he can free you from them. He wants to free you from your fears. Maybe it's the fear of being alone. Maybe it's the fear of starting a new job. Maybe it's the fear of going back to school like me. Maybe it's the fear of telling the truth, so, telling someone the truth and you're afraid to say it. Or maybe it's the fear of being accountable to someone. God's calling you to be accountable and you're afraid. What fear is God challenging you to face? The next way we can become good cliff dwellers is accepting change. Change is not a threat but a challenge. The unknown is frightening, but fascinating. Time and events go forward. Your life will be different every day. Why choose change? A change may be to your advantage. A change may promise to be interesting. A change may be a chance to learn something new and useful. A change may help keep you out of the cobwebs of monotony. A change might take you a step closer to your goal. And a change of your choice actually makes you feel powerful and in charge of your life. The key to managing change, listen carefully, the key to managing change is to live forward, to live forward. What is past cannot be viewed as either a monument or a curse. It must instead be a springboard, a launch site. So there are certain factors that help you accept change. Now we are living in a time of constant change and all of us are struggling with this. All of us. This message speaks directly to me because I'm, I'm having a lot of changes in my life as well. So what are the factors that help affect your response to change? What are the factors that help affect your response to change? The best way to situate, situate yourself to accept change are, listen to what the factors are, they include um, being in 
good health and taking care of yourself being in good health and taking care of yourself and I know we've had a past speaker that talked about self-care you want to go back and listen to that you want to take care of yourself what is that self-care what does that look like you also want to have a solid support system in your life make sure you have community make sure you have people around you who love you who support you who applaud you you want those kind of people around you in your life you also obviously want to have a strong and faithful and trusting relationship with God knowing that you know what when change comes <clears throat> our times are in God's hands. Our times. He knows the changes that are touching our lives. So what change is God trying to get you to accept in your life at this time? What change is God trying to get you to accept in your life right now? Because we're all going through real changes right now. So we've seen that to be successful rock climbers and cliff dwellers, we need to take risks. We need to face our fears. We need to accept change. Now we will look at embracing uncertainty, embracing uncertainty, and all of us are here in this place today. Oswald Chambers, listen to what he says. To be certain of God means that we are uncertain in all our ways. <laughs> to be certain of God means that we are uncertain in all our ways. We do not know what a day may bring forth. Now he says, this is generally said with a sigh of sadness, but he says, it should rather be an expression of breathless expectation, living in uncertainty. Another author who's, who wrote extensively about uncertainty, he wrote, and he actually wrote about doubt in his essay, The Leadership of the Legitimacy of Doubt. Listen to what he says, that the most successful people embrace uncertainty and are not afraid to admit they don't know. The most successful people embrace uncertainty and are not afraid to admit they don't know. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I don't know. And it's okay not to know. We need to embrace uncertainty in order to feel more comfortable in its presence. So here's our next reflection. Where do you need to embrace uncertainty in your life? Where do you need to embrace uncertainty in your life? Expect the unexpected. Lastly, how do we be good cliff dwellers? We increase our perception. Increasing your perception. Increasing your perception is becoming observant about what God is doing in your life. Become observant. What is God doing? What is God? Ask God, what are you doing in my life? Mark Batterson says, most of our problems are not the byproduct of our circumstances, but our perspective on our circumstances, our perspective on our circumstances, our past problems prepare us for our future opportunities. We need to reframe our problems. I'm going to talk a little bit about reframing your problems. Reframe your problems and develop a new way of looking at our problems. And we all have problems. Reframing your problems is about shifting the focus. Shifting the focus. So how do we do that? You stop focusing on what's wrong with your circumstances and, and instead start focusing on what's right with God. And once again, Faraday, I think she did part one of my message and this is part two, so you want to listen to that. You stop focusing on what's wrong with your circumstances and instead start focusing on what's right with God. What's right with God? So what does it involve? Reframing involves reconstruction changing our interpretation of an event from a negative, unhelpful interpretation to a positive, helpful one, to a positive, helpful one. We, bec we can become, it's called benefit finders rather than fault finders. Benefit finders rather than fault finders. And recognize, listen carefully, and recognize that while things do not necessarily happen for the best, some people, or you and I, can become and are able to make the best of the things that happen. I'm going to read that again. While things do not necessarily happen for the best, some people, or you and I, can and are able to make the best of the things that happen. Now one way I become a benefit finder in terms of my own life is by reading biographies. And biographies are so powerful because when you read a biography and you realize, wow, that person reached that milestone and yet they had difficulty, they had challenging, maybe God can do the same thing in my life. Maybe God can do the same thing in my life. And the interesting thing about biographies, when you read them, 
God is in the details. It's so powerful. You see God's handiwork in the details. Now, one woman, she did an extensive investigation on this process. And listen to what she said. By investigating how someone else got somewhere, by reading bios, we are more likely to see the achievement as hard won and our own chances as more plausible. So when you're reading bios, you're reading about people's lives and you see that they've had difficulties and you say, wait a minute, God worked in that life. Maybe God will work the same way with me. And this is what she says. People can imagine themselves taking steps while great heights seem entirely forbidden. So when you're reading bios, you're reading about people's lives and you say, hey, God worked there. God can work the same way in my life. So here's our reflection. How do we increase our perception? I want you to listen carefully. Take a moment right now looking at your past. Look at your past and try and ask God to show you what good has come out of it. What good has come out of your past? That's increasing your perception about what God's doing in your life. What good has come out of it? So now let's look at our next insect creature. Leading by example. Doing the right thing at the right time. The locusts have no king, yet they all advance in ranks. Locusts are leaderless insects, yet they strip the field like an army, regiment, with no ruler but by bands gathered together. So what does it mean to lead? By example, it means to be a person of influence. And what does that entail? A person of influence entails four things. Take initiative, be a model, follow God's timetable, and be thankful. Be thankful. So what does it mean to take initiative? I want you to listen to see if you can hear yourself in this. There are four kinds of people. People who do the right thing without being told. People who do the right thing when told. People who do the right thing when they're told more than once. And people who never do the right thing no matter what. Where'd you find yourself? Take initiative. Be a model. Lead. Actually, leading means influencing. Influencing the people around you. Accept responsibility for your life. Accept responsibility. Listen to what Socrates said. He said, to move the world we must first move ourselves. We must first move ourselves, take responsibility. Initiate, be the first to look for God's direction in all circumstances. Remember, you're being aware, you're asking God, what are you doing? Sometimes we need to initiate, sometimes, and other times we need to wait. Oftentimes, God calls us to wait. And while you're waiting, you're relaxing. You're trusting God to guide you in the direction you have set. A lot of times, God calls us to wait. You're waiting for God's plan to unfold. Listen carefully. Things happen in their own time. When you are ready, not when you think you are ready. When you are ready, not when you think you are ready. And then be observant. What does that mean? A change may come in a different form than you initially expected. Sometimes the change comes from nowhere. It comes from a different form. Sometimes, listen carefully, the right place often seems like the wrong place, and the wrong place seems like the right place. So be observant, relax, wait, See what God's doing as you're leading. Also, follow God's timetable. And we know that the scripture is very clear. Timing is everything for God. There's a season for everything under the sun. And lastly, how do you model? Be thankful. Now listen to what the research says about thankfulness. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. It will actually transform your life. Listen carefully. It actually means to appreciate. It means, so to be thankful, is the opposite of taking something for granted. So when you're thankful for something, you're not taking it for granted. A second meaning of thankfulness is to increase its value. So when you're thankful for something, you actually increase its value. Listen to the research on gratitude, and they've done so much research. It shows when we appreciate the good things. So here we are, we have a life. When we appreciate the good things in our lives, the good grows and we have more of it. When we appreciate the good things in our lives, the good grows and we have more of it. But the opposite is true. Listen carefully. It's also true that when we fail to appreciate the good in our lives, when we take the good things in our lives for granted, guess what happens? The good depreciates. 
when we fail to appreciate the good things in our lives, it actually depreciates. We have less of it. So I'd like you to start now, have, if you haven't already, to start keeping a thankful journal, to start keeping a thankful journal where every day you write three things you are thankful for. But listen, I don't want you to just write three things. I want you to write why. Why is your job? Why are you thankful for your job? Why are you thankful for your community of friends? Why are you thankful for your church community? Why are you thankful for your home? So write down three things you're thankful for, but also write down why, because you want that to grow. As you appreciate it, it will grow and you'll have more of it. So we've observed ants, rock badgers, and locusts. Now let's examine spiders, another of God's creatures, and what we can learn from them. Cultivating your unique skills and abilities. The spider skillfully grasps with its hands, and it is in king's palaces. The use of spider and lizard is used in this text. A lizards are easy enough to catch, but they sneak past vigilant palace guards. They live in the palace, these lizards. They have fine-tuned their unique skills and abilities. Skills and abilities. And God desires that you too would relish your unique skills and abilities, which will enable you to reach your highest potential. God wants you to reach your greatest potential. So how do you accomplish this? How do you reach your greatest potential? How do you do this? By first developing self-acceptance. By developing self-acceptance and focusing on your strengths and setting goals that are attainable and increasing your expectation, increasing your expectation. So now listen carefully about self-acceptance. When we stop resisting who we are and what we feel, we drop a heavy burden of an endless and hopeless battle against our humanity. We have to accept ourselves, accept ourselves with our frailties, with our handicaps, and know that God has made us, and it's okay that we are who we are. Carl Rogers said, when I accept myself just as I am, then I can change. See, God loves us, but He doesn't want us to stay the same. He wants us to grow. So I'd like you to uh, complete these sentences. This is called a, a reflection on increasing self-acceptance by filling out this sentence completion. So I'm going to give you examples, but I want you to be thinking about your own examples. If I like myself 5% more, it won't matter that I'm not my ideal weight. I'm just filling in examples. To increase my self-esteem, it's going to be okay that I don't exercise seven days a week. To become 5% more compassionate toward myself, I won't compare myself to others. I am beginning to see that it's okay that this is that or this situation is the way it is. These are called sentence completion to help you increase your self-acceptance. The next way we cultivate our unique skills and abilities is by focusing on your strengths. Grow with your greatest assets. Do not waste time on focusing on your weaknesses. The research is so clear. Don't even think about your weaknesses. Focus on your strengths. Increase those skills. Set goals. Set goals that relate to your personal and relational life. Maybe you're going, you're going, your goal is to be kinder. Maybe your goal is to be more generous. But set goals that are personal and relational, which are attainable and also challenging. Remember, a goal without an action plan is only a wish. You have to have an action plan. So the last way we in increase our unique skills and abilities is by increasing your expectations. Now this is very important. Whatever you expect, you will see. Whatever you expect, you will see. Your expectations define your dreams and your dreams define your goals. Start seeing yourself as a success now. Start seeing yourself. And I will tell you that when you're reading the Word of God, the Holy Spirit will encourage you. The Holy Spirit will inspire you. The Holy Spirit will speak through you and it will help you have greater expectations for your life. So how do we do this? How do we increase our expectations? We adopt a healthy approach to life. We're flexible and we cultivate a desire to learn. God's always teaching us. And we should be asking God, what are you teaching me now? So I want to share with you one way that you can adopt a healthy approach to life. So listen carefully. This is about the, a story about Admiral James Stockdale. So listen to this story. In his book, 
Good to Great, Jim Collins tells the story of Admiral James Stockdale, the highest ranking American prisoner of war in the Vietnam War. Known for his unbreakable character and resilience, Stockdale described the two defining characteristics of American captives who were most likely to survive the brutal conditions of the Vietnamese prison. So right now we're living in difficult times, difficult, difficult, challenging times. So what are the two characteristics? First, they openly faced and accepted rather than ignored or dismissed the harsh facts of their predicament. They didn't deny their realities. Second, they never stopped believing that they would someday get out, that someday God would work all things out. In other words, while they did not turn away from reality, accepting the brutal truths from their current conditions, they never lost hope that all would work out in the end, that all would work out well in the end. By contrast, both those who believed they would never get out and those who believed they would be freed within an unrealistically short period of time were unlikely to survive. So how do we adopt a healthy approach to life? We accept reality with its difficulties, with its harshness, with its challenges, because we're living through challenging, challenging times right now. But we also know that God is faithful and He's going to bring something good and He's going to work out something and He will deliver us. He will deliver us. So let's recap. How can we be exceedingly wise and follow the example of these small creatures on earth? We can do this by one, remembering all is preparation. What is God preparing you and I to do and be? Secondly, we become good cliff dwellers and dwell among the rock, rocks and cliffs and embrace change and uncertainty, which is just it's happening all the time in our lives. Be a person of influence and lead. Where is God calling you to lead by example? Where is God calling you to lead by example? And lastly, cultivating your unique skills and abilities. Where is God calling you to grow and focus on your strength? So let's spend a moment praying. I'd like to pray for you and with you. Dear God, I thank you so much, God, that you do uh, have a purpose and a plan for each one of us. Ultimately, God, to bless us and make us a blessing. I pray for everyone as they're listening to this message, God, that you would speak to them. You know where they need to grow. You know where they need to accept change. You know where and how they can grow in their self-acceptance. We thank you, Father, that uh, you love us that you always have good in store for us, God. Help us to see your heart. Give us your mind, God. And I pray your blessing on each one, Father, that even as they read your word daily, that you would encourage them, God, that they would be uplifted. We, we thank you for this time. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Maria. A great, great message. My three takeaways. From her message tonight were her three suggestions that can lead to success. Number one is self-care, taking care of yourself. Number two, to have a support system and people you can speak to and accountability partners. Number three, of course, is to have a relationship with God. Those were my three takeaways. And there's a link in the chat room now for the questions for your open share group tonight. And it's five questions slash reflections on Maria's message. So click on that for those questions. But once again, Maria, thank you so much for being part of the CR family and sharing another message with us. A uh, reminder, uh, CR lessons are being done online on the CR Facebook page. Every Saturday night, Johnny Baker is doing the lessons and uh, they happen at 6 p.m. West Coast time, which is 9 p.m. Our time so tune in for those those will also be uh, archived on their Facebook page as well as they upload them to the YouTube page a couple days later last Saturday's lesson uh, was action and action stands for accept turn it over it's only the beginning one day at a time and next step that was lesson number six which was last Saturday which is on the Facebook page so if you missed it last Saturday tune in next Saturday's lesson is lesson number seven which is sponsored. And Johnny Baker will talk about why we all need an accountability partner or accountability partners and why we need them. 
I sent an email about this last week, but CR is going to have a little summer break and we won't be meeting next Monday or the following Monday. So we won't be meeting the 24th or the 31st. And I did send out this email on Monday. Well, it was supposed to go out Monday, which had this information. Ended up going out Tuesday twice and I apologized. A little issue with software. But I generally send out an email every Monday. It's also a text uh, letting you know who the speaker is and reminding you about CR and that we're going to be meeting on Monday night. If you aren't getting those emails or texts and you want to get them, let me know who you are and I'll make sure if you, uh, you get on the list. And if you are getting them and don't want them, let me know and I will take you off the list. And just a reminder, new folks, we will be meeting uh, anybody new who wants to join us in the Newcomers 101 via Zoom. Uh, click on that Newcomers link and we'll be meeting right after this so we can get, up, get you up to speed on seller recovery and how the open share groups work. And uh, let's go over the open share guidelines now. Uh, number one, keep your sharing focused on your own thoughts, feelings, and actions. Please limit your sharing to three to five minutes. Number two, there is no crosstalk. Crosstalk is when two people engage in dialogue during the meeting. Each person sharing is free to express feelings without interruptions. This also includes digital chatting. We are here to support one another. We will not attempt to fix one another. Confidentiality are basic requirements. What is shared in the group stays in the group. The only exception is when someone threatens to injure themselves or others. Offensive language has no place in a Christ-centered recovery group. Number six, all members must use headphones. This will ensure that no one else can overhear what is being shared in the group. Number seven, all members must be on camera. If the group leader asks, they must show the rest of the group that no one else is in the room. Number eight, the meetings will not be recorded. Let's read the serenity prayer together. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking, as Jesus did, the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for Maria's great message. Lord, please help us to reflect on the positive in our lives. Please help us to face the fears in our lives and how we can use those fears to grow. Help us to be wise. Help us to take care of ourselves. Help us to find accountability partners and draw us ever closer to a deeper relationship with you, Jesus. Continue to keep my friends and family safe from this virus. I ask for healing for anybody who is sick or anybody who is struggling from being alone. I ask for healing and comfort for anybody who is depressed or anxious. I boldly ask that you heal them and you show them your love, mercy, and grace like no other father can. It's in your mighty name I pray all these things. Amen. Well, folks, have a great week. I'm going to miss you over the next couple of weeks. Remember, reach out to people during this little break of what CR is having. And I miss you. I love you. And keep in touch with each other. Blessings. Have a great week. Bye.